Good morning. It's time to get In Touch. In Touch is a public affairs show dedicated to improving the lives of Susquehanna Valley residents. I'm Freddie Hammer, News Director at Backyard Broadcasting. As COVID-19 arrived last spring and threatened the health and safety of our seniors being served in elderly nursing care, the administration and staff at Valley View Rehab and Nursing Center in Montoursville worked hard to create and support protocols they thought were the best practices during this coronavirus pandemic. And we'll talk today about how they adapted and had good outcomes with Michelle Brog, Chief Administrator for Valley View. Good morning, Freddie. Hi. And Tammy Miller-Welty, an infection preventionist and Director of Staff Education at Valley View. Good morning. Michelle, the work you and your staff have done to keep everyone safe seems to have worked. You know, we've done very well, very well through this last six months. Sure. And it, it does, it, there's, it's, there's a lot of teamwork here. And, I mean, everybody has to be on board. All the staff, you know, um, even the families, because we're allowed with family visits right now. Sure. And um, the residents. So, and so we, you know, we just, there's so many things that, uh, that, a facility like ours has to do uh, because we do accept or we're, we're still accepting admissions of course especially in our rehab unit yeah our russell russell rehab unit and but it, it does take a village ready and i'm gonna let um tammy give some specifics but we've done very well because we we follow the guidance mm-hmm. i mean we're very strict here even you know even though i know some people might not appreciate that but for the most part people are happy that we have been strict and have followed the guidance to a T. Absolutely. And so I'm going to let Tammy just say a little bit more about that. Yeah, uh, talking about how well your the Valley View has been faring, I mean, it's definitely at the helm of infection control, isn't it? Yeah, so it's very important. We uh, make sure that we are bringing our employees every day. They have to wear masks, of course. Um, we're asking whether they've had any signs or symptoms or any kind of exposure. We're also um, checking our residence temps and um, their oxygen staff every single day. So uh, just take, keeping on top of that and making sure we're not allowing any sick employees in the building is priority. I'm wondering also, Tammy, about how the Pennsylvania Department of Health has stepped in. Was there anything especially different that happened as they stepped in and made sure that all the guidelines are being followed from when you had done it differently before, or was it the same as before? Actually, when they came in and did our surveys, um, they were very impressed with what we were already doing. We have what we call our green folder, and that has all of our guidance in there. Um, That's something they've never seen before, so they were very impressed that we were able to have all that information right on hand for all of our staff to review every day. I would say almost a, a leader in the group in Lycoming County and all the other counties that you serve. Yeah, I, actually one of them wanted to use that as, our, as one of their best practices, so um, we were very happy about that. I mean, talk about those best practices. When were they formulated? I mean, you're talking about at the beginning of the, you know, the beginning of Valley View generally, you've been following those policies. Yeah, so we, we, you know, added to them as we needed to. Things change every day. So, you know, what we're doing today may not be uh, what we need to do tomorrow. So we just need to make sure we're keeping up on everything that's coming out. Let me go back to Michelle Brog, Chief Administrator here for the Valley View Rehab and Nursing Center in Montoursville. How is it that you're able to keep the motivation and spirits up from everybody, Michelle? Well, that is a very, I love the question because there are so many things that we have done since this, everything broke loose and we had to shut down visitation. Mm -hmm. We were one of the first ones to begin drive-by visits out front. And so at least their loved one could stay in the car. We kept them six to eight feet apart, mm-hmm. and the, and they were able to talk with their loved ones. So that that has been um, a real plus. But the other things we're, we've done so many other things. We also started a support group for residents and staff, and it's called Grace. And you know, just to help them through this time, and if they needed any assistance, and Grace stands for giving real assistance and care to everyone. Mm. And um, and just so you're aware as well, our board of directors is very involved. Even though they're not able to physically come in, they are very involved in all the things that we do. And we keep them apprised of everything. So, um, you know, we've just been able to, and to keep everybody's spirits up like we're doing today, the carnival. Yeah. We couldn't do our bazaar. We have an annual bazaar every year. So we said we're, we decided to do a Corona carnival. <laughs> <laughs> 
I know. It's, yeah, but you know, thank goodness, you know, um, you know, we're, we're good okay sense of humor. But the residents have loved it. It's been a great morning. Um, we have cotton candy, popcorn, hot dogs, French fries, fried Oreo cookies. Oh my gosh! Everybody should have a couple of those. <laughs> and I know, and and they are a hit right now. They can't keep enough of them in stock for everybody. And then we're doing carnival games. We have car- with prizes, <laughs> and we have carnival music, and the residents just love it. And they're all social distancing. Yes, they're wearing and they're wearing masks. masks. <laughs> so even though we want them to have fun, we still have to make sure they're safe. So. You can definitely put those two things together. I mean, it's, you know, in the good spirits, and people are all friends. That's a good thing. Yes, and, of course, hand sanitizing often. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when residents have different needs, as far as hospital needs go, do you do much transferring between your facilities to get them the care they need or the therapy they need, and then do they come back to the residents? No, we try not to anymore that's necessary. Any unnecessary appointments and things like that that can be postponed to a later date, we do that. Now, if they have to go out, that's one thing, but if it's not a necessary time to, you know, that they have to go, we don't have them. I'm sure someone who's coming into the facility is being screened, like you said, so that that can be taken care of in your underneath that one roof. Yeah, any admissions that we get, they have to be tested prior to coming here. We don't we don't take them unless they've had a negative test. Well, tell me a little bit about your policies at this time for visitation. I know that things changed in August. You're probably still having your drive-by visits. Well, actually, we're doing in-person visits now. Um, we started them early August, but then we did have three positive cases isolated in our dietary department. Okay. And um, and then so we had to pull back visitation. But now we're back up and running. We got those folks cleared and and it was very isolated, just with three staff members. No residents have been ill. No residents have had COVID. So uh, we began back visitation in person on August 24th. Mm-hmm. It's going wonderful. So every day, there's except Sundays and holidays, we have 12 visits a day. And that's 12 residents. And they can have two visitors each. And we do them either inside. We have a huge lobby area. Or they can go outside in our beautiful courtyard. And so that's what we've been doing, and it's been going awesome. So Social distancing, yes. and they both need to wear masks. We screen those families mm-hmm. when they come in the door, so, and they know ahead of time if they have any illness whatsoever, they shouldn't come. So we still screen them anyway. And sanitizing everything. So, And we're keeping everybody safe. We have signs posted everywhere, and um, it's been going very well. I'm wondering about, uh, as far as moving forward in this new, almost of a promise that we're going to have a resurgence, do you look at that almost like the wolf at the door? Unfortunately, yes. I think we kind of have to consider it. So everything we have, we can do, we're trying to prepare for it. Well, the good news is you've already sort of had a round of making sure that you're doing the right things. It sounds like you're absolutely keeping people safe and making sure everything's going in the up and up and in the positive direction. We're going into flu season, so we had to take that, you know, into consideration. So we've already started our flu vaccines for our residents, and we'll be doing our staff. I'm just trying to get a little ahead of the game here. How often are staff people tested as far as checking for coronavirus? We are testing weekly. Um, it, it goes by the county's positivity rate, which uh, right now is 5.1. So anything over 5%, you must test weekly. Below 5%, we can test once a month. So... We have to follow those guidelines. Are there families that are concerned as they need your services, and how are you reassuring them? Well, typically what what happens is the social workers are very aware at the hospital um, because most of our referrals come from the local hospital, uh-huh. from UPMC. So they are already, you know, uh, let them know, the families know ahead of time, um, how, you know, what happens here and now, I don't know about other facilities, but we are allowed visitors now, so we make sure they know that we are doing visitation, and all they have to do is set it up uh, with our front desk. And there's even a, a, a dedicated phone line we have that they can call into to get an update on our visitation status and what's going on. And, of course, we have newsletters. We have wonderful monthly newsletters that we send out to everybody to give them updates. But the families can call. We can do Skype. We can do... Um, FaceTime, we do all kinds of things. We still do the drive-bys, too, as the families feel more comfortable. Some families feel more comfortable. Sure. So right at the beginning, we assure them, assure all the new 
families and residents that we are doing absolutely everything to keep them safe. And, um, you know, and that includes them when they come in, before they come in, they have to be tested. And then when they come in, they're kept as well and the full protocol. Um, and the families have been really good because we do talk to the families upon admission and we explain to them what our process is. Thank you so much for joining me, both of you, today on In Touch to talk about how the response from the pandemic for Valley View Rehab and Nursing Center in Montoursville. Give us your website. Sure. It's www.valleyview.org. And you can also find us on Facebook at Valley View Rehab and Nursing Center. Well, thank you, ladies, for joining me today on In Touch. Thank you. Thank you very much. In Touch is locally produced in our studios at 1685 Four Mile Drive in Williamsport. To get in touch with us regarding questions, comments, or topic ideas, call weekdays between 8 and 5, 570-323-8200. You can also write to us at 1685 Four Mile Drive, Williamsport, PA, 17701, attention Freddie Hammer, or email me at fhammer at backyardbroadcasting.com. For archive programs of our In Touch series, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Backyard Broadcasting. Each current weekly program is featured on the Backyard Broadcasting websites. Thanks for listening to In Touch, a production of Backyard Broadcasting.